Um, I will be talking about the mess that Rayful created. That's where Michael Frey Salters comes in. What's up everybody? It's your girl B Octavia and I am back with another video. What's up everybody? It's your girl B Octavia and I am back with another video. Welcome to my channel if you are new. Just know that I am from Washington, D.C. I am a mom of a almost four-year-old. And I am an entrepreneur with my own business, Crush On You Beauty. And in today's video, I will be talking about Michael Frey Salters and Rayful Edmond. And honestly, I feel like this will be the last that I talk about Rayful because I don't want it to seem like... I'm on a hate train or anything, but it's all about my perspective. And I'm telling y'all what I respected, and I also have no problem saying what I don't respect about anybody. You know what I mean? But anyway, I want to move on to other things, other people. I will be talking about the mess that Rayful created, and also I will be including what was a real factor in Rayful Edmonds snitching on a lot of people from his past, a lot of people that he was doing deals with in prison, etc. So, Rayful's crew was about 27 to 28 people. Some of them were young, you know, at the 18, 19 mark, which is unfortunate. I feel like he used the youth in the wrong ways. He might have had a basketball team and stuff like that, but honestly, I feel like that was a facade or a means for him to show his talent, you know? So it always goes back to him him it's never really about the kids just like you know him folding and telling was not just to reduce his mother's sentence and that's what I really want to get into but first let's talk about the mess that Rayful created so Rayful Edmund created a mess within Trinidad and Trinidad is a hood in DC so, Rayful's crew did business in Trinidad, and this gang that was within Trinidad was doing a thing, you know, as, as it goes, you know, hoods break up into almost teams, and they might all be on the same side, they might not. That's what makes DC dangerous, is the hoods are all not united, you know, it's people that got hella clout and popularity around a hood that get plucked off and why do you think that is well that's because it's a person or people or a team within that same hood that despises them you know so people always think it's an outside person or it's outside people that took out this person no it don't even have to be like that that's what makes dc so complex if you remember i told y'all rayful edmund spent thousands upon thousands to stay alive after the execution of big head gary's brother brandon terrell right so after brandon terrell was executed it was not only the police that were having a eye on Rafel's crew. It was a rival gang, and it really ignited after Brandon Terrell's death. And that's where Michael Frey Salters comes in. Now, I want y'all to stay tuned this week because I do have, have the Gold Elephant book, and I will be reviewing that book for you guys. But let's get into this rivalry so the rivalry between both crews i mean it was so close and we talked about a dc beef in today's time that was extremely close like last week extremely close to the point where both gangs was in the same hood after brandon terrell was killed both sides decided that it was time to go to war and when i say both sides decided that don't mean that it's mutual that means that the other side which is not rayful's side decided it's on and what does the other crew what does rayful crew say to that 
it's no backing down you know what I'm saying and from that point 30 plus bodies dropped within the span of a year and I'm saying a year loosely it might have been actually a shorter time than that and of course all of these murders drew the police closer and closer to all men involved right everybody involved but especially Rafel's crew because they were bigger fishes at the time you know but a lot of them were threats huge threats to society to DC as a whole to these communities that they are attached to and to each other I mean my thing is a lot of people talked about, even including Rayful, bragged about how flashy he was and how, you know, he liked his diamonds glistening and all this other shit. Well, that really drew the police in, too, on top of you having 20-plus people with you. You the iciest one. It don't take police much, and that's just the point to it. Like, if, you, if you're going to do it and not be aiming to go to the feds for the rest of your life, I suggest you learn how to keep a low profile. If you're going to brag about the flashiness and stuff, you got to be real and say, well, that was a factor in me getting caught up too. So when it came time for him to do business in prison, everything pretty much fell apart and most of the money majority of the money fell into the hands of whoever was working the product out on the street he seemed pretty salty about that so that could be a factor too you know in doing business and getting money put on his books it just wasn't enough so that can make you bitter that can make you angry towards the people that you've quote unquote helped on the outside. So, right now we are going to talk about Michael Frey's role in saving Rayful Edmund. But it honestly pisses me off that nobody warned or saved Michael Frey. A huge rivalry, as I told you guys, was a mist. And nobody could ignore it, but only the powerful among powerful in D.C. could possibly extinguish it. It takes a strong person who doesn't really bring their safety um, as a factor, you know, when trying to extinguish these beefs. Because no matter who he is, or no matter who he was... He could have got plucked off then. He could have got hurt then. He could have got shot then. And he took that risk. But it did cost, cost a pretty penny. Right? He already paid a pretty penny to Big Head Gary. And that didn't keep, keep anybody but Big Head Gary off of him. He paid a fee, a pretty penny, to Big Head Gary, among other people. It didn't stop at Big Head Gary. He ran to Michael Frey Salters and paid, paid $100,000 to put an end to this rivalry, this war that was going on within the Trinidad neighborhood, which he did, okay? Michael Frey was the last person that Rayful had to pay for his protection. And in turn, I feel like that should have protected Michael Frey. You know, at the end of the day, so many feuds and so many rivalries got put on the table and extinguished by Michael Frey being the mediator, the street mediator, right? Word travels so fast. It just, it makes me sad all the way around for Michael Frey because he saved a lot of people, including Rayful, and it didn't help him none. It might have helped him momentarily, you know, at the time, but you see that it don't come with nothing. Yeah, money, but if you're not alive to spend it, it don't even matter. He had deals going down with Ray Fool and Tony Lewis and things like that. So, to end this video off, I am going to be telling y'all what I feel 
was Rafel's real reason and folding on everything that he knew. His mother might have been a factor, right? But at the same time, I feel like his trust was gone for everybody. And to me, Rafel left a lot out. You know, Rafel left a lot out of his reasons for folding. Yeah, you might have got caught, you know, but at the same time, you you made that choice. Nobody else could have made that choice for you. I would like to know his thoughts now, you know, of how he feels, especially because of how 6 9 is carrying his snitching card, you know. And bottom line is, Rayful left a lot to be speculated about why he told because yeah i mean your mother's sentence getting reduced first of all you shouldn't have got your mother entangled into this in the first place that's what real players do you know i i, I don't agree with that at all my thing is if i'm involved in something that my child is doing i'm just gonna take my time you know i'm not gonna say oh yeah son you should put yourself up for the chopping block and you know in in hopes of getting my shit reduced because i was found guilty you know i was found guilty of what what didn't happen and in the mother's case she was on a wiretap okay and she was boasting and bragging about all that her son was doing so you know she could not dispute that it's irrefutable so it's a lot of different reasons, and I feel like he had no problem with turning on people that he did business with um, in the past or in jail because he just didn't trust nobody no more, you know? But when you have always paid for protection, when you have always had people around you, you know, to protect you and to and to shelter you and to give excuses and to be the hitman and to be this and to be that how do you change you know how does that change so there's no denying that there's still people out there that do support him because that shit just doesn't change you know if you've always had a 20 plus entourage it's it's no changing in that you always gonna have an entourage you're always going to have to have an entourage and people around you to protect you so you know i feel like if he is out or let's just say when he does get out because a lot of people think he's still in prison for some reason but if he is out or when he does get out that fear alone of being alone will scare the shit out of him it's your girl b octavia and i will see y'all in my next video